You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettes out there in Gwinnett Land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. Ooh, it's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. I missed you guys so much. Oh my God. So it's so crazy. So I went on vacation and so it was crazy because my friends were like, that's a real vacation because I didn't do this show for two days and trust me, I was having like, I was having anxiety issues like for real. But anyway, it's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 80 degrees going up to a high of 88, got a chance of some rain in the, in the forecast. I'm so happy to be back though. I'm not going to even lie. It's been crazy. I had a wonderful, wonderful uh, four, five days, five days in Miami. I haven't been to the beach in I think three years. So it's pretty nice to go to the beach. Now listen, I'm not a real big beach person, but my daughter loves water. So we went to Miami for her 30th birthday when she turned 30 on um, June 28th. But I didn't get a chance to say happy birthday on here, but happy birthday to my darling Dominique. She turned 30 on June 28th, which was Monday. I want to also give a shout out to Miss Shirley Edwards, my, my, my brother's mother-in-law, who had a birthday yesterday. And I think I gave a shout out to my good friend Tyrone. Maybe I didn't. He had a birthday on Sunday. So it was a lot of June. And a, a shout out to my good friend Walter Cross, who also had a birthday on June 28th, which was Monday. So I'm going to give a shout out to all of those people. Happy birthday. I know for all of you that belated birthdays, but happy belated birthday. But I had a great, great weekend, y'all. I'm going to tell you, it was, and it was crazy because rain was in the forecast every single day. But here's the thing. It rained and it did just like it do here. It rained and then it just stopped. It rained and then it just stopped. People didn't care. People were walking in the rain. Like my brother was there. And um he and his wife love being in the rain. They have always loved being in the rain. I can I didn't I can't even understand that. I hate being in the rain. Like we are so different like that. Like when it's raining, if if the rain is in the forecast, now rain is in the forecast today, and I got a slew of meetings after the show because I got to get out and, and do my business. And rain is in the forecast, so you know I'm dreading being caught in the rain. I don't know what that is. My brother, on the other hand, he loves in the rain. So what happened was, and he's funny. So let me tell y'all this quick story. So we all booked to stay at this one hotel in in um in Miami, which was called the Hotel Hemmerin Rosa, which is a nice, cute boutique hotel. It really is. It's a cute little boutique hotel right on Collins Avenue. So it was cool because they had a nice front patio and we hung out at nighttime. We watched people. It was really nice. So my brother likes to be in the swimming pool. So him Rosa doesn't have a swimming pool. And so instead of him staying there, he moved to a hotel down the street, which was about probably about 10 minutes down the street um, in a car, right? Um, so he called me, said, man, this is not even, a, this is not a hotel. This is a motel. That's what you mean. He said, man, this, so listen, marijuana must be legal in Florida because everybody just walk the streets and smoke marijuana. He's like, it's so much weed up in this hotel. I feel like he said, this has got to be a motel. And I said, but you said it had two swimming pools. Like you had two swimming, two pools, but it's a motel. He had me cracking up. And so I was like, well, we don't win. He said, you probably in a motel. I was like, nah, we're not in a motel. We're in a hotel, a very cute little boutique hotel. And it really was a cute boutique hotel um, called Hamrosa. And it's dead smack on Collins and Espinola, Espinola Way. I think it sits right there. And you like, oh, it was, it, was a, it was a really cool time. And what's crazy is I said to my husband, we're coming back. There's not a lot of places that I like to go and I said, I'm coming back. New Orleans was one and I'm going there next month. I like New Orleans. I wanted to go back because I didn't get a chance to see a lot of stuff when I was there because um, I was there for business. And so I didn't really get it. But the, the little that I saw, I like, I want to go back. So I, it's rare that I go somewhere and I, I want to go again. It's, it's very rare. So Miami, I was like, oh yeah, I definitely want to go. Here's why I want to go because the energy, like it was great energy. It was, um, we, we finally went to, let me tell you where the best food was. The best food, I got to give a shout out to the sugar factory in Miami on, on, uh, Ocean Boulevard. That food was so freaking delicious. I had lots of penne. Oh my God, y'all. 
When I tell y'all, like I had, I ate at. Let me see, I ate at. So there was a restaurant. I don't even know the name of. There was a. It was a real Italian restaurant. That's the first place we ate. That food was good too, but it was real Italian. Like they were not playing. Like when you go in there, they tell, they explain to you what their bread is made out of. Don't expect like the thick, you know, Pizza Hut kind of crust. No, it was real Italian. It was a. They spoke Italian. <laughs> they were real Italians. So the food was delicious um, at that place. I ate at another place called Salt. Wasn't really impressed with their food because it didn't have enough seasoning. They had this little cheese thing. I know I love cheese. They set that on fire and with some wine. So that was pretty good. But I had a lobster roll. It wasn't that great. So that wasn't all that good. Um, the lobster rolls wasn't all that good. So it was watery. It wasn't all that great. So I didn't really like the food at Salt too much. And then what else did I Where else did we eat? Oh, we added the pelican, um, God, the rusty pelican. Okay, I had lobster there, too. My lobster was overcooked, so they had to give me another one. It was okay. So, I, and it was expensive. So I'm like, it's expensive, and the food is not that good. So, the food wasn't in. Sugar factory? The sugar factory food was, when I tell you, they were, they were quick on the delivery with the food, and the food was um. Everybody said the same thing at the table, like, oh, my God, this food is so good. That freaking food, I want to go to the sugar factory here in, in Atlanta. I didn't know we had one in Atlanta, but guess what? I'm going. That food was, that's going to be a Friday night, date night situation where we go to Atlanta to the sugar factory for dinner because that food was so good in Miami. Now, I'll be totally disappointed if I go and the food is not the same. Let me tell y'all something else that happened. I walked so much in Miami till three days in a row, I went over 8,000 steps. It's tough for me to get 8,000 steps in. But for three days in a row, I went over 8,000 steps. I was so proud of myself to the point where the last day of the trip, I was at I was at 6,000, I think 6,555 steps or something. And it was like 11 o'clock and I was like, I got to go to bed because we got to get up in the morning and get on the plane. I got dressed for bed, right? And I looked at my Fitbit and I was like, man, I'm only like, I'm only like 2,000 or some steps away. You know, everybody was asleep except for me. I got out the bed, got, first, at first I got out of the bed and I started walking down the hall with my pajamas on, right? I said, well, I'm going to see, can I get these 2,000 steps in, in, in the hallway? So the camera people, the, the people at the front desk probably were looking at the camera like, what is she doing? So I was walking up and down the hall with my pajamas on, trying to get my steps in. I was like, man, this is not working because it's not long enough. So I got out the bed, got dressed, went back in my room, I got dressed, and I went for a walk on Collins. And I walked Collins until I got my steps in. And I came back and I had just like I had 8,255 steps when I when I laid down. And I was like, I was so proud of myself because I for me to get into uh, 8,000 steps three days in a row was amazing. I rarely get to do that because I'm always sitting at my desk doing work at my desk. So I rarely get to do that. So I was excited about that. So anyway. Just wanted to share how my weekend went. Hope you guys are having a, a wonderful week so far. Today is National Social Media Day and also National Media Watch Day. Now, here's the thing. Every day is Social Media Day. They named, they gave it a holiday. They gave it a holiday. But it's also, you know, every day is social media. People live on social media. That's their lives. You know, there are people who get up just for social media. That wouldn't be me because I'm, I'm rarely on social media, which is not a good thing because everything... Everything that every marketer is telling me is that I need to be on social media more. I suck. Podcasting, yes. Social media, no. I don't consider podcasting social media. I consider podcasting business. That's what I consider podcasting. Anyway, it's hump day, y'all. It's Wednesday hump day. You made it to the middle. You have made it to the middle. Yes, tomorrow is my Thursday. So, I mean, my, tomorrow's Thursday and that's my Friday. However, because I took two days, literally took two days off when I didn't talk to you guys. You, yeah, my friend said, because it was a bunch of us in Miami. She was like, oh, yeah, you really on vacation. It was hilarious because I never take days off when you guys, even when I go on vacation. I remember going on vacation um, last year with my husband. We went for our anniversary. And we had horrible, horrible, horrible internet. But I was still doing a show um, on, on vacation. I remember going to the ranch last year. And trying to do the show and the, and the internet was horrible and I still got a chance to even, I think I did the horoscopes only, but I didn't even get a chance to give, give you guys the horoscope. But forgive me, forgive me. If you miss me, I'm sorry, I'm back. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever do that again unless I'm just out the country and I can't do the show. Um, but I had a really good time. Anyway, it's Wednesday hump day. Let's go ahead and get on with these horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen for today. June the 30th, yep, the last day of the month, we're about to be into, listen, we are about to be into the 4th of July, yep, I know y'all got plans for the 4th, when is the 4th, oh, the 4th is Sunday, 
Heck, the fourth is this week. Oh my God, I can't even believe this. The fourth already. Yes, the fourth is this week. Good morning, Georgette. Georgette was there with us, y'all. We had a wonderful time. Georgette was there. My brother, my daughter, my husband, my granddaughter, my brother, his wife, and my good friend, my one of my best friends, Rosa. She flew in from Jersey. We just had we had a great time. My nephew came, Trey. Um, we just had a wonderful time. It was really, really a nice event. And I really look forward to going back. Like I, you know, that was one of those things where I, I, I at first I was like, I ain't going back. Then I was like, nah, I'm gonna go back. Then I said, like, I ain't going back. I really do want to go back. Um, because I had such a great time and I just really want to just go and be, I think I want to go, uh, early fall, like where it's not too hot. It's just really nice where I can just go to the beach and not burn. I went to the beach. It was hot. It was hot, 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 hot. It was hot at the beach. But anyway, let's go ahead and do these horoscopes. We're going to kick it off with Aries. Romance will be yours if you get out and do things in large groups. Enlist, enlist co-workers in order to get the job done on time. You must steer clear of overindulgent in, individuals. Listen, anybody who want to overindulge today, Aries, fall back from them. Steer clear of them, fall back. Don't even do it. Enlist the, enlist the co-workers in order to get the job done on time. Don't be trying to do it all by yourself. Get some help. Ask for help. Ask. Ask for help. Taurus. Be diplomatic, but stern. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Find out if they have other commitments. Problems with fire, gas, or oil may cause disruptions and annoyances. Be careful. That's all that's saying today, uh, Aries. I mean, not Aries, Taurus. Be careful. You may have some problems with some fire, some gas, or some oil. All of those sounds like disaster. Every one of them. So be extremely careful today with how you handle those, those components. Fire, gas, and oil. Be, be careful. I'm just helping Michael tell you what to do. Gemini. Competitive games will be your forte. Yes, be inquisitive about unfamiliar circumstances. Family responsibilities are escalating. Yes, you got some responsibilities. Handle your business. Hand I got some business to handle, y'all. I'm not looking forward to it, but I got to do it. Um, but yeah, handle your business today, Gemini. Cancer. Deception is apparent. Partnerships could be tense. Don't push your luck. You'll be able to break Bad habits if you put your mind to it. Yeah, somebody's trying to deceive you, Cancer. Listen, they're trying to deceive you. Watch out. It's apparent, but you got to be looking for it. You got to be You got to be aware. You got to pay attention. Also, partnerships could be tense. I don't know what that means. I don't know what kind of partnerships. Don't push your luck. I don't know if it's business partnership, love partnerships. I don't know what they are, but they could be, they could be tense today. So just know that. Leo. Listen to the problems of others and offer suggestions where possible. Don't let others know about your private affairs. Chances are you split up the last time because you didn't really want to make a commitment. Yeah, chances are you just not you just a commitment phobe, right? And that's why you split up. So you probably figured out how to break the relationship by relationship up by starting some fights. Do you really want to be in a relationship, Leo? Ask yourself that question. For real, like a real relationship. Or do you just want to friends with benefits? Listen, some people are happy with just having friends with benefits. Me personally, I like like being in relationships. I want to I know, I know that's my person. I don't want to have you, you, you and you. What do you want, Leo? That's you. I'm just saying me. What do you want? You know, did you break up because you didn't really want a commitment? Maybe you just want some friends with benefits. And hey, listen, everything is whatever floats your boat. Let me just say that. Virgo. You may be more emotional than usual. Really? More? Oh god. Don't overspend on entertainment, on children, or make poor investments. You can open up to your mate and let them know what you expect out of the relationship. Listen, they can't read your mind, Virgo, so you need to open up, tell them what you need. A lot of times we think people can read our minds. They cannot read your mind, Virgo. They need to know what it is you want. They need to know what it is you need. The way to do that is to open up, open up your mind, uh, open up your mouth and say so. All right, so listen, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the hard skills brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen. Stay tuned. Time goes by and yet I wonder Are you and me still the same? Are you still loving the game? I know I don't. You can't see your soul and I would not wonder I know the laughter and the pain Will I never love again? Baby 
Kearney giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Michael Thyssen. We're going to pick it up with Libra. You must be careful not to trust in just anyone. Your tendency to dramatize may be a little much of a... Let me see. I'm, I just got all tangled up right there. You must be careful not to trust just anyone. Your tendency to dramatize may be a little much for your partner to take constantly. Yeah, you just being a drama queen. Try to join groups of interest such as barroom, dance classes, or perhaps an uh, internet organization. Yeah, go get... Listen, you being a pain, right? You just... You're too much drama, Libra. Not now. Not today. Go Take a class. Take a salsa class. Take a ballroom dancing class. Does, do people really take ballroom dancing anymore? I don't even know. Like, you see all kind of crazy stuff on TikTok. Do you take ballroom dances? What do you ballroom dance? Do they ballroom dance? I'm just saying. Uh, Scorpio, be careful that you don't overextend yourself. This is a wonderful day to look into courses or hobbies that interest you. You should get involved in competitive sports today. Yeah, be careful not to overextend yourself. Listen, don't do like me. I overextend myself all the time. All the time. This is a wonderful day to look into courses or hobbies that interest you. Yep, I can't take another course. I got a stack of books and a stack of courses that I have to take. Yeah, don't overextend yourself because all that stuff does is overextend you. Don't do that. Don't follow me and do that. Sagittarius, consider making residential changes. Either moves or renovations could pay off. Use your ingenuity to manipulate things to get what you want. Someone you live with will be impossible. Enjoy taking courses or lecturing others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, somebody you live with today, Sagittarius, is going to be impossible. Here's the thing. If you can't put them out, you might want to just go to your room, close the door, put on some nice meditation music, and just zen out. Just Sometimes it just helps to just zen completely out. Shut the world out. You know my Pisces. We like to shut the world out. Like, if I could shut the world out this morning and just be, I, could, I would, but I can't. I got meetings. But you just, just shut it out. I'm just trying to help you out. Capricorn, you will attract new love interests. Be careful not to reveal private information. Your ability to add a sophisticated touch will help you capture 
the look you're after. All right, what is that sophistication? Is it a new hairdo? Is it a new bow? You know, is it a new set of glasses? What is it? You know what I mean? What is it? You got to ask yourself that. What's that whole thing? Um, yeah, that look that you're looking for. What's your best asset? I'm just trying to help. I'm, listen, I got some sleep last night. So, I'm a little bit in rare form again today. Y'all know how it is. When I get rest, I'm good. Aquarius, look into ways to make your home more comfortable. You must strive to get the most important projects completed properly rather than doling everything in a half-baked way. Half, half baked way. Spend some time with the one you love. Pleasure trips will be satisfying. Go to Miami. Listen, don't go to Miami if you're scared of people, though. I'm just going to tell you that right now. If you're scared of people... Especially this weekend, do not go to Miami because people were everywhere. Even yesterday when we first when we got ready to leave, it wasn't so many people, but it was people. Not yesterday. Sunday. No, Monday. Monday. We weren't leaving Monday. But Monday when we got up, it was Monday morning. So it wasn't as many people as it was over the weekend, but it was still people. So if you're still afraid of people, yeah, don't go. But if you're not afraid, check out Miami. Miami. Now let me just say this. You need to have some money. If you're going to Miami, because everything costs money. Let me tell you, we went to one place, right? And this is no lie. I want, I was, because I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm not cheap, and I'm not. But this was right. This right here was crazy. So I go to the restaurant, and the girl comes out. I think we were at the Sugar Factory. She comes out. She brings a bill. It was huge, right? The 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 the, the what do they call it? The service fee. There was a service fee on the bill for forty nine dollars, right? And I said to her, "Is this service fee the same as the tip?" And she was like, "No, it's a service fee on the bill that's forty nine dollars, and then you got to put in a tip." I was like, "Service fee?" She's like, "Yeah." She said, "You know, we split now. They take the service fee and split it. Now I understand why they do it because I don't think wait staff make a lot of money. But here's the thing: if you don't know, if you don't know, you got a big service fee." My, my service fee was $49. I almost fell out my chair when she told me, no, that's not the tip. I'm like, that's not the tip. So $49 is a service fee. That, now, this is my bill. Mind you, it was three bills at the table. My service fee bill was $49. And then you have to leave a tip. Now, I love a tip. I love a nice tip, too. But I got to tell y'all, I was like, yeah. So what I'm saying to you, if you're going to go to Miami, expect to spend some money. I paid $16 for a calzone. I don't even know what I haven't eaten a calzone in 20 years. And I'm like, do calzones cost $16? Wait, like, really? Yeah. My husband and I spent $83 on brunch. So when you brunch, so I'm just letting you know when you go to Miami, you just better be ready to spend some cash, baby. Cause it's it gonna cost unless you find your McDonald's. And crazy thing is, I didn't see a McDonald's anywhere. I'm trying to remember. I didn't see any fast food places anywhere. All I saw was pizza. I saw Italian places everywhere. Like it was like where we were. I'm like, okay, this is like little Italy over here. But just expect to drop some money. I'm just telling you that right now. So I know the next time I go back, I was like, okay, now I know what to expect. That kind of caught me off guard a little bit, you know, because I'm thinking, well, you know, we're gonna eat some pizza. I'm gonna find me some some crabs. I ain't eat no crabs. I ate lobster. Oh, I ate lobster three times. As a matter of fact, probably while my service fee was forty nine dollars. Well, anyway, everything was great. Last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces. Networking will be a necessity. Oh, God. That means I have to pretend. Your partner may make you make you feel jealous and unloved. Your ability to converse with charm will entice someone you may have an interest in for some time now. Well, I don't know about you, fish. I ain't got no interest in nobody. So I hope you... Listen, you're going to be charming today. You're going to be able to entice that person um, but if you in a situation, don't be charming. Don't be trying to entice people if you're already in a situation. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm just if your love is making because I feel like now it's like tip for tat. Your love is making you feel guilty. Now you're gonna throw in the charm. Kind of somebody you've been kind of want to wink at anyway. And the fact that they're making you feel unloved and jealous, now you're gonna wink at them. That but you're in a situation, so just remember that, right? Now you're gonna this is probably gonna happen at the networking event you're gonna go to. So you got a lot going on today, fish. Look, fish, I ain't with y'all today. I ain't with it. I ain't trying to go out there. I got a whole lot going on today, but listen, I ain't got time to be winking at nobody and charming nobody. If you're in a situation, don't do it. It could backfire on you. All right, that's all the horoscopes I got for today. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. to bring you more of the horoscopes. 
brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thoughts. Now let's get on to some news you can use. So y'all know back a while ago, I talked about the story when um, our new sheriff, who's actually the first African-American sheriff to be to hold that position here in Gwinnett County, was in trouble with the GBI because they're apparently, apparently, allegedly, allegedly, um, there was a there was a video going around of a, a Bell Bunce agency, and in, in the video he was saying, you know, people don't support me in this election. I ain't gonna renew their their their, their certification to be bells a bellsman in this in this in this county. And so he got sued for that. And so um, there's a lot going on. Like, there are people who think you know that you know maybe. You know, he may even have to step down and, and the seat will be opening. And there was a whole lot. It's a whole lot. And I don't know. I don't know where they are in, in the investigation. But what I will say is that an agreement has been reached with at least one of the three Bell Bunding Company, Bell Bunding Companies, um, that sued Kibo Taylor. Yeah, Sheriff Kibo Taylor did. At least one of them has has been reached. Taylor said, Taylor, over his decision, um... He said uh, he was sued over his decision not to renew their certification to issue bail bonds in Gwinnett. Um, now he's gonna they can they can resume handling the bonds in the county. Now they said the reason they got you know snatched in the first place was because they didn't support him in the election. That's the alleged that that's the conversation that's going around right now. You know, and I'm like, ooh, but I gotta tell y'all some power. Mm, power is something serious. You hear me? So that's some power for you right there. Like, yeah, you don't support me. I, I know what I'll do for you. And apparently, uh, you know, these three didn't support them and they got their certification snatched. But anytime Bella said, I want mine back and I'm suing you. So they have been, um, an agreement has has been reached with anytime uh, Bell's bonding of Gwinnett Inc. They can resume work that they did before Teller decided not to renew the company's certificate of authority in January. But there are catches that will be involved. So he, now he renewed it. He's renewing it, but there are some catches, right? Listen, you want to know what the catches are? You got to go to Gwinnett Daily Post and find out what the catches are. I ain't got time to read this whole thing to y'all. But I'm just saying, you know, um, I'm just going to say power. That's all I'm going to say. Power. Power is a mother freaker, y'all. Go to GwinnettDailyPost.com. You can read the whole story there. Um, He said, the chef keep on said, I made a promise to reform bond companies and the bond industry in Gwinnett County. He said in a, in a press conference on yesterday, the settlement is a giant step in fulfilling that promise. To read out what the promise is, to find out what the promise is, go to Gwinnett Daily Post and find out what it is. Um, it's kind of funny, though. I'm just going to say power one last time. Power. Power is a mother freaker, y'all. And some people get it. Some people get that power. And they be like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, okay. Um, North Cross Mayor Craig... Uh, Craig Newton um, picked to serve on the Georgia Municipal Association Association's Excellency and Policing Committee. K- kudos to you, sir. He's over in Norcross doing great things over there, helping him out. Um, Norcross Mayor Craig Newton was recently picked to sit on a 16-member Georgia Municipal Association Committee aimed at examining practices and guidelines um, for municipal police departments in the state. Kudos to you. The Gwinnett Municipal Association picked Newton to sit on the Excellence and Policing and Policing Committee. He will be one of only three mayors who serve on the body, which also includes police chiefs, city managers, community advocates, city attorneys, and Georgia Municipal Association staff. So kudos to you for that. Um, somebody got to police the police. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Somebody got to be on the committee to police the police. Listen, don't get mad at me. That's what has to happen. I'm just trying to help you out. All right, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So stay tuned. Uh-huh.
Welcome back, welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So, well, Gwinnett County has finally, finally hired a new election supervisor. Yep, yep, yep. His name is Zach Manifold. Oh, God, I heard the name. I want to hot <laughs> Manifold. Well, I don't think that's the same person. I mean, I know it's not a relation. I was thinking about Manafort. Yeah, election. Manif- it kind of like, yeah. Anyway. Gwinnett County has hired a new election supervisor and the chair of the election board said on Monday that she expects voting materials to be translated into three additional languages beginning next year. So there's going, those those voting ballots are going to be translated into voting poll materials. They're going to be translated to three languages next year. That's a great thing because now that gives everybody opportunity to vote. You don't have to worry about somebody helping you make the wrong decision because you understand what's on your ballot. That's important. Listen, you know we got some. I ain't even going to get off on my rant about elections because there's a lot going on still. Um, There's a lot going on with elections right now. And so um, because we still have a former president who said election was you know, we cheated and all this kind of crazy nonsense. And there are a lot of people who believe that. I mean, lots. Here's a, here's a sad part about that, right? The sad part about that is that African American, and, and this is a sad because African Americans have not voted like they're supposed to vote. And when they did come up and vote, now it's a fraud, right? Because that's what they believe. They don't believe that the African Americans and people of color say, you know what, we don't want this guy in there. We want him out. So we're going to go ahead and vote. We came to the polls when President Obama did it, right? But not just us. It was a lot of people. It was a lot of people that came to the polls. This time, they felt like it was Joe Biden that that, that the other candidates should have won. I, but it's sad that if, if you come to the polls all the time, we will have to be going through all this. If you come to the polls all the time, I vote all the time. Every time there's an election, I go and vote. When my mom was here, she made sure we, she voted. It's like, hey, get my ballot. She couldn't physically go out and vote. But we took a ballot. She and my uncle, you know, it was like, take my ballot. Now, my uncle used to would not vote. He's like, I ain't, ain't voting for nobody. He would not. He told me he would, you know. Um, but since he's been living with me, he understands the importance of his vote counts, right? And so if we came out on a regular basis when it's time to vote instead of just laying back when you have the time, this wouldn't really be an issue because now it would it wouldn't look so crazy that all of these people just rushed out to vote. Now they're trying to take your voting rights completely because you've been sitting on them for years up until last year. Now it's like, oh, that can't be true. They never vote before. That's not happening. That so. Now, but here's 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 what I would say. I would say to everybody. I mean, I don't give a crap if you gotta go and and this is me personally. If it's an election and you're trying to restrict voting, I, we can get a van and just go around and collect votes. That that's my thing. Like, listen, those votes are gonna get to the polls. Now you now you making us go to extra step. We shouldn't have to do that. I get it. We shouldn't. But that's look like where we're going. I don't know how this whole election thing is gonna pan out because it's been a mess. Everybody knows that Gwinnett County was in the news in the last election. It was crazy because I was I was on somebody's show. I was being interviewed on somebody's show, and the guy was like, um, "Oh, Gwinnett County, you guys are in the news." I was like, "Yeah, in the news for to- for voting. That's what we're in the news for." I'm like, "Really? Gwinnett is beautiful. I love it here." But we're in the news because of the whole voting fiasco that went on last year. Anyway, we have a new we have a new um, election supervisor here in Gwinnett County. Prayerfully, he'll get in there and get the job done um, fairly. I'm talking about real fairly. You know, um, I, I'm just I'm just I'm I'm just hoping that he'll do the job. You know what I mean? So um, we needed that. Because we had somebody that was like, I ain't gonna even listen. I'm not gonna get off on that. I've been trying not to do politics on this show. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to start a podcast just for politics. I do because I just feel like, you know, what's crazy is when I when I first launched the Peach Report, the Peach Report was supposed to be all about politics. Like, I never launched it, but I was like, I'm gonna do the Peach Report. It was about everything in Georgia politics, right? And I still may do that because I, I can't I can't see me not being like talking about certain things. I don't want to make Good Morning Gwinnett that thing. You know, I want to make Gwinnett an uplifting podcast to talk about what's going on in this community and beyond and bring on great people to share with the community, share us with the world. So that's kind of where I went in. But I really feel like I need a, I need a political podcast. I just really do. Because I still, you know, politics, they, ugh, they do something to me. And I don't know. I might have to do it. I don't know. Y'all know I'm a one-woman podcasting machine. I am. I Listen, I claim it. I claim it. I claim it. (laughs) 
Dude, that's probably like, you better not start another podcast. Yeah, I know. But y'all know I love podcasting. I ha- And I'm I, honestly, y'all, I'm really working on starting like one right now. I got Wise Women Invest um, podcast. I'm still trying to, I'm just trying to figure out the time and the day for that one. Like, that's still kind of like, you know, I'm trying to make it all fit like within my four days, which is a lot of work. I'm going to figure it out though. By, by, the, by this weekend, I got a whole lot to figure out this weekend with just my life in general. But I'm going to have this whole podcast thing laid out the calendar, you know, you know, the whole nine. That'll be figured out. Um, Northeast Georgia is going to open a medical center. Yep, I think that's pretty cool. Northeast Georgia Medical Center officials recently gathered with their counterparts from Longstreet Clinic and North, uh, Northeast Georgia Physicians Group on Thursday, last Thursday, um, for a ceremonial open of the Brazelton Cancer Center. Yeah, there's going to be a cancer center in Brazelton. Um, the center will open, uh, which opened to patients on Monday, is designed to be a one-stop cancer care destination for people living in Brazelton area, in the Brazelton area. It is located on the Northeast Georgia Medical Center Brazelton campus um, in the Medical one, Plaza Building 1, which is which is on, with its own dedicated interest. So this is going to be good because now, listen, when I thought I had cancer, I had to go all the way down to Winship um, in Emory. That's why I had to go. I went to the Winship Cancer Center in Emory and... Um, Thank God I didn't have cancer, but they thought I had cancer because they saw something on the ultrasound that looked crazy. And they couldn't, they didn't know what it was. They couldn't tell what it was, so they thought it was cancer. It freaked me out, I, you know. But here's what I, here's what happened to me when I got that when I got the call because I got a call that said you have cancer. That's what I that's what my call said. My call said, uh, "Call and tell you have cancer." And this other guy said, "Hey, is this Audrey? Yeah. Hey, this, this is um, his name was Kevin." He said, I'm just coming to let you know that you have got your blood work back and you have got your, ultra, your ultrasound back and you have cancer. Here's a good thing. It hasn't spread. This is how he's talking to me. It was a Saturday morning, St. Patrick's Day, 2017. And I was like, did you just say I got cancer? And he said, yeah, but it hasn't spread. So we want to get you over to the to the Emory, to the cancer center at Winship, the Winship Cancer Center at Emory. We want to get you over there. And you know, I'm get, I cried like a baby, like, oh, my God, I got cancer. Like, what the? So... I cried the whole day. It was a very sad day for me because I thought I was going, you know, you know, when you think cancer, the first thing you think is going to die. The good thing is I had my mom who had battled cancer twice and she was right across the hall from me saying, you're going to be okay. I beat it. You'll beat it. Um, I was, I was a mess. I was a mess. And so I wound up not having cancer, but I walked around from March to July, not knowing whether or not I had cancer. And the reason I did that is because the doctor said they want to see if it spread. I'm like, spread? I don't want it to spread. Take it out. You know. Um, but I had to drive to DeKalb County every day. I had to drive to Decatur every like week to get checked, right? So that was a hassle. It would have been pretty cool if I because you know, you gotta get in traffic. If I could have just went to Brazelton. But I couldn't go to Brazelton because there was no Brazelton Cancer Center at the time. So I had to go to Gwinnett, down to Decatur to to the to, to the Winship. And you know they were great there. They, everybody was great, and I, you know, um, and 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 um, once I, once I had the surgery, and they, and the first thing I said to my husband because I had, I had a, I had a really, um, I, the surgery was really intense because I had these things that were growing horizontally like this across my abdomen, and one was attached to my bladder. And one was attached to my intestine. It was crazy. They didn't, they still don't. They never told me what it was. They were just like, you got something growing across like this way. And they told me if, you know, because the one that was attached to my intestines, there was a possibility that I could have a colostomy back for like the rest of my life. And I, I don't know if I've told you guys this story, but I was in nursing school. And my first day in clinical, like in the hospital. Now, I worked in the hospital at that point for eight and a half years, right? But I didn't have to do anything where I had to put my hands on anybody. My first day of clinical, we went to the hospital, and the first thing we had to do was change the colostomy bag. And I knew right then and there I was in the wrong profession. Now, my mother had told me before I even went into nursing, you're in the wrong profession. And you know you shouldn't be in the profession. I'm like, no, they make a lot. So me chasing money. No, they make a lot of money. And me wanting to have all these days off so I could party. And they, make, they have all these days off because that was my rationale. That was my rationale for going to nursery school, nursing school. And... um. Uh, I dropped out. Of, I dropped out of nursing school that day when they had told me I had to change a colostomy. So when I got the diagnosis that I may have to live with one for the rest of my life, I freaked out. So the first thing I asked my husband when I woke up after the surgery, I said, um, "Do I have a colostomy bag?" He said, "No." I said, "Do I have cancer?" And he said, "No." 
And I was like, thank God. And I went back to sleep because I was still on the anesthesia. So, you know, just being able to be able to have a cancer center right here in Bradleton um, and not have not not that I have anything against Winship because they were great. But that's a drive like from from Lawrenceville to Winship. That's about a 45 minute drive when I could have just drove over to Brazelton, which is about 15 minutes for me. So I'm, I'm excited to see that the cancer center is there and I'm sure they're going to be doing good work to help out our citizens here in Gwinnett County um the ones who are really battling you know cancer and not only that when you're sick you don't want to really do all that driving you know even if someone is driving you still got to leave out the house you don't want to do that when you're sick you don't have the energy like I wasn't sick I felt fine like had I not and the reason they discovered these things I'm going to call them polyps I don't know what they were the reason they discovered them going across my abdomen is because my back was hurting so bad so I went to the doctor to find out what's wrong with my back, and then he said I see something on he saw me on, on your on your ovary, but it was they were they were uh, they were attached going horizontally across my abdomen, one side of my intestines to my bladder. So that's the reason I found I didn't I didn't feel sick or anything, just had back problems, and I I can I attributed that to just being too overweight. And so, but my back was hurting so bad. Like, listen, you got to give me something for my back. He said, we need to do an MRI first. They did the MRI and that's when they saw these things that they thought that my primary care doctor told me was, well, not her. Someone in her office told me it was cancer because she, she repeated the MRI again to make sure they saw something. She saw it. She said it's there. And her, one of the, the associates in her office called me and told me it was cancer, but it wasn't. Thank God. So anyway. Let's keep it moving. Um, Collins Hill grad Maya Moore receives the prestigious Arthur Ashe Awards at the SB. Yes, that is so freaking cool, man. I got to give her a round of applause. So, um, Collins Hill's grad Moore, who gave up her successful basketball career to work on criminal justice reform, will be presented with the prestigious Arthur Ashe Award at the SB's on July 10th. Let's, she gave up her career, y'all, because she felt like she needed to do something more um, in basketball. Let's give her a round of applause. So, Moore stepped away from basketball in 2019 during the prime of her career and launched her Win With Justice program to focus on the criminal justice system, including the case of Jonathan Irons, a wrongfully convicted man who was convicted of burglary and assault and sentenced to 50 years in the Missouri prison. 50 years for burglary and assault. He had served 23 years of his sentence when his conviction was overturned thanks to the work of Moore his advocate. Wow. Oh my God. He was released last year in July. Oh my God. So he's about to celebrate his one year anniversary of being home after serving 23 years of a 50 year sentence for being wrongly convicted. 23 years of his life. I know the universe know what it's doing, but oh my God, that's a long time to be sitting behind bars. Listen, we were sitting in the house for a year. We weren't even behind bars because of the pandemic. I can't imagine spending 23 years of my life in jail for something that I just did not do. But anyway, her work on his case got him re- released and um, and his, his conviction overturned. So, you know, she was his advocate. He, she was his advocate. So that was that was crazy. Oh, wow. She said in September, Moore and Irons announced they were married. Not only did she get him out of jail, they got married. Wow. That's even better. I think I, I think I told a story about her before. Anyway, to read the full story, go to Gwinnett Daily Post. You'll find the story there. That's a cool story. Like, she fell in love with him. He was in prison, and they got married. How about that? 50 years? Yeah, she had a successful career going on in basketball, and she's like, you know what? I got to get, I got to win for justice. I got to get my program. I got to get my man out of jail. He didn't do it. I know he didn't do it. She believed in him. That's some love there, y'all. She believed in him. She stuck by him, and she got him out of jail. Not in married. That is beautiful. Beautiful. And now she's going to be presented with the Arthur Ashe Awards on July 10th at the ESPYs. So kudos to you, girl. You 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 fought for your man. You ran for your man. You held it down. You got him out. That's what I'm talking about. Love, baby, love. All right, listen, I'm going to my last song. I'll be back after this song. Um, I'll be back after this song to give you my inspiration for the day. So stay tuned. I ran away from heartbreak. Got nothing, Got nothing in return, return for my pain. pain. I never, I never thought, thought I'd be, I'd be so, so empty, empty, so alone and afraid. Was it worth it for a love? I 
Welcome back. So listen, guys, that's all I got for you today. But before I go, I want to give you my word of inspiration. You know, I like doing this. So here goes my word for today. Hold on. Uh, wait a minute. I lost it. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Did it... Okay, wait, wait. Okay. All right. So here, this is a good one. It says, the best time for new beginnings is now. Oh, man, that's so good. The best time for new beginnings is now. Here's what I would tell you. On my vacation, I got some news. It wasn't devastating news, but it was like kind of caught me off guard. And it threw me for a loop because the person that I normally go to when I have these situations is my mom, right? Because I know my mom, she will always help me think things through, right? Because she she's a thinker. She was a thinker and she would always help me think things through. Even when in my in my worst situations, I would always go to her first because I know... She's going to help me think things through. Well, you know what's crazy about my mom? I said to her, you know, they I was doing one of these um these business programs and it said um ask your friends what what is your strongest what is your strength? Like what is the thing they 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 they, they think is a strength? My mother said to me and I'm never going to forget it. She said for me, it's the way you think. And I said the way I think. She said, "Yeah, it's the way you think about things." And I listen, I never, my mother wasn't a person of many words like that. Like when it came to compliments and things like that, she wasn't that person. But I realized she analyzed and watched everything, right? Even when we thought she wasn't paying attention, she was paying attention. That's why I'm always able to go to her when I have these tough situations. And so right now, you know, I got a phone call that threw me. It threw me for a loop. It was totally unexpected on my vacation. And I could have let that ruin my vacation, but I didn't. But the first person I thought about was her because I know that's the person that's going to help me, that's going to walk me through and talk me through, help me talk through what I need to get done, right? And I felt so alone. I felt so like I don't have her because, and I don't have nobody to talk to about this situation that's going to help me walk through the process, right? Because she's the person I always, like right now, that day, I would have called her guess what happened? And she would have said, you know, and she, and my mom, she was an action person. Like she was not a talker. She was an action person. It's like, listen, this is what we got to do. This is what we're going to do. That, and that would have been her. I know I didn't have that. I, I don't, I don't have that at home anymore. I don't have that person that's going to say, okay, look, 
this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to happen. Because that was her. She was a take charge kind of person, which is weird because I'm like that in certain things. But there are certain things that kind of throw me. And when they would throw me, I would go to her room or I would call her on the phone and say, hey, check out this is what happened. And if it, had she been here yesterday, that's what she would have done. But she wasn't here. And so, as I say here and say that, according to what I just read, your, your inspiration for the day, the best time for new beginnings is now. I'm about to start a new chapter in my life. You know, um, one of the things for me has always been to move out of this, out of my home office into a space. And I tried that last year, but the pandemic kind of threw me back home. And so my daughter said to me today, you know, you just, you, you become complacent. And I was like, really? It's like, yeah, she's like, you comfortable? And she's right. And someone told me like, Audrey, when you leave your house, your business is going to explode. Like this business that I do here, this podcast, it's going to explode. So when you leave the house, your business is going to explode. And I was like, okay. And you know what was crazy is my business has been gradually like taking on a life of its own. You know, like right now I'm launching a podcast for the Gwinnett, the Greater East Side Chamber. I'm launching a podcast for the the, uh, the district attorney of Gwinnett. So it's, it's kind of trudging along, right? But I think it really would have exploded if I leave my house. And so there were some things that happened over the weekend that kind of threw me. And, but I know that this is a new beginning and a new beginning, a best time to start a new beginning is right now. So what new beginning are you starting today? That's my question to you. What new beginning are you starting today? I know that's a tough one, right? But every day we get a chance to start over. Every second we get a chance to start over. Every minute we get a chance to make a new decision. And you just have to ask yourself, what's that decision? I mean, I had to sleep on some things. I had the, I, I had a sleepless night, like, like not last night, but the night before last. When I tell you, I had, I think I slept three hours. I had a very sleepless night because in my mind, I needed to jump into action. And I was in Miami chilling. You know, I couldn't jump into action. I couldn't do any. I kind of did jump into action a little bit. But not like the way I need it. Even today, I can't even jump into action like I need to because I got four meetings back to back. So, um, but, but, but I had time to sleep on it last night and understood that this is a new beginning. You know, it's a new beginning on so many levels. Um, and let me tell you how it is. And I'm, and I'm going to let you go. God will push you out of where you need to be. I'm telling you right now. And I said to myself, okay. I've been kind of in my mind saying I need to make this move anyway, but I just like, oh God, I don't want to, oh, this is going to be too much. And I, in my mind, I know I need to make it anyway, right? I know I need to make it anyway. And I've been kind of like, even, and my uncle even said something to the, like before I left to go to Miami, he said something to the point, like, hey, this is what we need to be doing. Now, he and my mom was like almost the same person. Hey, this is what he said. We need to be doing this. And I was like, okay, yeah, we'll start it when I get back. This is what I said to him, right? And no lie, I got that call and I literally have to start what what he and I were talking about like now. I have to start it. And he said that to me. And I was kind of dragging my feet like, yeah, we will. Oh, we will. And God was like, no, you're going to do it like right now. And this is why you're going to do it because you just got this phone call that make you do it like right now. And it's crazy because he said that to me right before I left. He was like, hey, you know, we need to start doing such and such. And, such. and I was like, oh, yeah, I do it. We'll, we'll start when I come back. Right? I just kind of blew it off because I was like, yeah, I don't really feel like doing that. But I will do it at some point. Now, we're going to do it right now because that phone call has said, you got to do it right now. So, anyway, just wanted to share it with you guys. Listen, y'all know I missed y'all so much. That's why I'm still talking. But I'm going to stop talking because I got to get me something to eat before I go to this meeting. And it's at 1130. I got to go. I really love and appreciate you all. Thank you for always listening to this show and supporting the show. Um, if you miss any episodes of the show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to the past episodes there. Also, be sure to share the show with your friends by telling them about the show. Tell them about the app. We have an app. Like if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, we have an app for that. Download the app from the app store. Tell your friends because the more app downloads we can get, the better I can support this show. The more people we get to go to Apple Podcasts and you do the same, go to Apple Podcasts, find your favorite two episodes, give them five stars. The more people we can get to go to Apple Podcasts, not only find your shows and give it five stars, but also leave a comment and subscribe to the show, the better I can support this show. The more you go to goodmorninggwinnett.com and you buy something from the store, the better I can support this show and keep it going. I love doing this show. I love talking to you guys. I love sharing experiences with you. I love talking about business. I love talking about tech. I love talking about everything we do on this show, and I need to keep that going. But I need your support. I need you to support the show by doing one of those three things, helping me build up my app downloads, helping me build up my followers on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, wherever you listen to the show, I need those numbers to increase like tremendously. And that's going to help me 
build the show out and continuously to grow the show and be continuously to come and make it better and better and better. Again, I'll be moving out my house again. I'll be moving out my house again into the studio, but I'll talk about that more at another time. So, with that being said, listen, tell your family and friends you love them. Give them a hug. If you get a chance, take a short vacation. I did. It was amazing. Um, amazing. I needed that time, but let me tell you something. Taking vacation and coming back, I need a vacation from the vacation. All right? All right. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing to bring you more of the horoscopes, more news about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So until next time, y'all, make it a great day. I'll be back. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.